challenge or the other unknown to us, so Lord, go on with prayer to visit them and do to them according to their desires, O oh Lord. In mm -hmm. the name of Jesus, you said your word, if two or three of us will gather and touch anything on earth, you will do for us in every our leaders, O oh Lord, that are facing one challenge or the other. Pastor Shego, Pastor uh, Matthew, even mm -hmm. every one of us, O oh Lord, we pray that you visit us and meet us in the point of our needs, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Anything that causes us tears, anything that causes us pain, Father in heaven, we pray that you look down upon us and visit us, O oh Lord. Father, visit us, O oh Lord. Father, visit us, O oh Lord, and put laughter in our, in our lips. Take away all our pains. Take away all our pains. Lord, that, that I have a financial crisis, O oh Lord, Father, we pray. The riches is yours. Father, we pray you will say your word that even the riches of the of the Eden will be given to us. Father, open doors for us and let us make oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. That sister they were talking about that day that is not connecting again. Uh it's just that I cannot really maybe I will check if I still have a contact. One of our major challenges then was our husband uh, not being faithful and all of that. And she was going through a lot and we discussed at length and she asked even questions privately and all of which I can't even discuss now. Asking some kind of question, well, there were some of the, if one of those questions was even very shocking and all that. She wanted me to answer by all means and all that. So, it's also likely it's possible that maybe it's a still marital issue that not made her to be connecting. So I need to really trace her since I already have an established relationship with her. So I want to pray as many who are going through some kind of a crisis in their home and then it's affecting. I've personally realized as a person that once there's a kind of a not conflict now or of course, misunderstanding is uh, bound to happen, but there is what we call conflict. And uh, there are a couple that try to avoid conflict. Now, what this is what I mean. This is what I mean. There could be conflict. That's not the problem. Yes, but res resolving conflict is what matter. And how to resolve conflict is what matter. But there are those who are trying to do everything to avoid conflict by so doing they don't tell each other the truth have you seen couple that they cannot confront each other with the truth that cannot be a ld relationship he said i cannot say what is in my mind i don't want to i don't want trouble i don't want misunderstanding i don't want you to even misunderstand me and all that and so as a result, now this one is hiding the truth. This one is hiding the truth. Even when the truth sometimes hurts. So we want to pray and cry unto God as many whom having unresolved conflict, unresolved conflict, as many whom who are having issues that they are yet to resolve and it's affecting other areas of their life because it will affect. It can affect prayer life. It can affect worship before God. It can affect a whole lot of things, even work in your place of work. It can affect, it can spoil many things. Have you not seen couple? Have you not seen people backsliding because of the pain and the agony they are going through in their home? Either the man backsliding or the woman backsliding. We want to cry unto God now and say, Father, all the unresolved conflict in many homes, in the precious name of Jesus, intervene this morning. Intervene, my God. Intervene. Father, and we bring all families represented in this platform, Lord, into your hand. Commit Thank Pastor you. Matthew into your hand. We commit Sister Jiro Tutu into your hand. And any other family that we may not know but are facing difficulties between them. Father, we pray this morning. Arise, O oh Lord, visit them. Father, their wine that has gone sour, replace their wine and restore their love in the name of Jesus. Father, you said two cannot be together except they be agreed where families are hiding the truth from each other. Couples, 
are hiding the truth from each other. We cannot speak the truth the way it is. What sort of family is that? That is not an early family. Father, in heaven, we pray, O oh Lord, that that first love that was there before these people got married, that love that was there when they newly got married, that love that was there when they, they could not do without themselves. Father in heaven, but now they can do weeks, months, year without seeing each other, without talking to each other. Father, we pray that you take away whatsoever the enemy has planted. You said in your word that the enemy has done this, whatsoever dies that the wicked one has planted in those families. Father, we pray, you said you will uproot them, O oh Lord. You will uproot them, Father, uproot all those ties and restore back unto them their first love. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord God, you now we pray that you visit these families, O oh Lord. Visit these families, O oh Lord, and bring, unite them again in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Now, we want to pray for Akimumi and Angel. Yes, where they have uh, a story, a story was told yesterday, uh, or two days ago, one of our Christian brother, who is a police person, was telling us of the WhatsApp how a mother was shot, a woman was shot. In fact, he's currently handling the case in Benin. He has to travel to Benin as a police inspector, as a police officer, to go and handle the case. So, and the, so it, the ten years uh, daughter was was there uh, when the mother was shot, or was around there, something like that. So we're not wondering the psychological trauma of that child seeing the mother rolling in blood or whatever and all that and uh, such such trauma live longer uh, such trauma live longer if not that jesus if not that jesus arrested people like us on time as a teenager i was already born again i mean genuinely saved genuinely born again as a teenager with all the trauma and the pain that i went through in life i would have been a very hostile person are uh, hostile, and uh, those are the things that make some people to become very hardened in life, and then they will become so hardened that they will just see some situation. They will not have anything to do with Christianity. They will not have anything to do with pastor. They will not have anything to do with men. They will not have anything to do with women. They will just take drastic decision because of those emotional trauma, serious trauma in life. I want to pray. In the name of Jesus, whatever trauma these children are, they are already going through emotional trauma. I want us to know that. And we can have to use prayer to set through those things. Those are the things that can cure them, uh, cure the emotional trauma. We want to pray every emotional trauma in a kill me an angel. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the Lord take care. Let the Lord heal. Yes. Every sign yes. of peace emotional illness, mm -hmm. psychological mm -hmm. illness, all kinds of illness. Uh, you heard what Pastor Matthew was telling us, <laughs> that how his academic life uh, dropped down, and how, you know, his performance also uh, was a bit affected and all that. Such thing, that's part of the trauma I am talking about. Let the Lord uh, intervene in the life of this. Lord, I me, an angel, Lord, into your hands. We said in our late Trump uh, language here that when the two elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers it. <clears throat> and in this case now, the struggle between Pastor Matthew and Sister Nyinka, the people that suffer it is the children. We commit these children, Lord, into your hands. We pray that your hand of mercy will rest upon them. You will open their inner mind to see that what is happening uh, is happening, but that they need to have their own good life. They need to have their own good way. Father, we pray that you will help these children to come out from this trauma and face their life fully. In the name of Jesus, oh. commit, O oh Lord, accumulate all to your hand, I pray, that your hand of mercy will rest upon him, O oh Lord, and bring him out of all the stain and giving the grace to face his life squarely, O oh Lord. 
In the name of Jesus, our little angel, Lord God, now will commit to Lord into your hand. The grace, the wisdom she also needs to maneuver, to maneuver all the, all this way. I wonder what the mother will be telling her. I wonder what the father will be saying. I wonder, oh Lord, Father, we pray. Every children, Amen. And this will not affect them in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to pray that whatever cancel. There's what we call the uh, cancel of Aito Fair. Now, for example, the, the boy that I told us, that my supervisor son when I was in Uniben, that left for the U.S., a very intelligent boy, very, very intelligent. In fact, he had first class mechanical and then he had scholarship to U.S. And now the boy now has nothing to do with god you cannot call him that you want to pray with him of course we have to pray with him uh, we have to pray for him i remember but only god can tell what went wrong i cannot even tell now because i cannot tell how a child can just wake up and then begin to detest god a child that was probably born in the, i think he was born in deeper life and all that and everything and for, just for that child to go off now and then the same church he was going, the same God he was calling, only for him to just develop another thing entirely. That even mm -hmm. the mother can call now and say, you want to pray with him and all that. Is that serious? We want to pray. Every demonic influence, whatever influence that will come upon a king with me, an angel, in, either in school, on the street, or anywhere that will influence their life negatively. And maybe with that, whereby they begin to say, look at this, look at this, look at it, and look at it. And then they begin to tell them to take some funny, funny decision that can impact on their destiny, on their future, and on their eternity. They will not <laughs> yield to this uh, advice. They will not yield to those peer pressure. Let God help them. Let their conviction be firm. Let their stand on the scripture be, uh, be firm. In the name of Jesus Christ, let them help uh, these children. Let the Lord help them. Everyone commit these children to the Father, Lord, Father, Lord, Father, 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 we pray, pray that yeah. any influence, negative influence, that we want to make them turn their back to God. Father, we pray that you take away from them, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, in your word, you said you put enmity between the, uh, the, the serpent and and. And 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 us, Father in heaven, we pray that you immunity, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father. Uh, okay. Okay. Good question, Joey. But who is Jesus? Walter, could you make a way, Walter? Is Jesus real? Hold on. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord God, you never went to the one cause enmity between. So, Lord Father, we pray you take away, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh Lord God, you never come in the name that you cover them with the precious blood of Jesus, that no evil we. Nigger! In the name of Jesus. No evil, O oh Lord. Evil, O oh Lord. No evil, O oh Lord. Evil, O oh Lord. We affect these children, O oh Lord. In the name of oh, pray, O oh Lord, that you will not allow any evil to come upon these children, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, some stranger just entered the platform. I will may not God let them in again. May God arrest them in Jesus' name. I want Amen. to pray lastly. I want to pray lastly. I want to ask the Lord concerning Pastor Matthew. Pastor Matthew needs enough strength. He needs enough courage, enough encouragement. And they want to whatever we can uh, do. Let's continue to support him in prayer, not just only on the platform. Let's continue to pray for Pastor Matthew. And we trust the Lord in the name of Jesus. The truth is that it's, it's, it's easier said sometimes than done. The truth is that 
um god has helped him that's a that's a word god has helped him for a few years and all of that and there are, there are men why not the mercy and the grace of god i know i could have been the other way around and so god who has been helping him and been keeping him may that god continue to keep him may his amen and his conviction to stand for god remain firm in jesus name amen and we will not rejoice over you, Pastor Matthew, in Jesus' name. Amen. May not afflict you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You of uh, 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 hypertension, you will not die of high blood pressure. You will not be diagnosed with Amen. things that will in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Or else, the Lord take care of your children. The Lord arrest even the woman. The Lord Amen. have his in your family. The Lord intervene in the situation at hand, and Amen. you will testify to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, open, Pastor Ma, uh, Peter, please uh, just uh, help us for like five minutes or so, and then hand over to Pastor Matthew. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are going to uh, pray for the program in the Philips team. You know, our Father and the Lord has uh, gone there. I learned from Abia Strait. He moved to the, Philipp the Philippines. Now we are going to pray that God will really move as he has been moving in Africa, as he has been moving in other, even in India, where the pastor went to, that God will move mightily in the Philippines and that souls will be won. God will sweep across that land because Jesus said, except this gospel, we go to the four corners of the earth, it will not come. I think what is delaying the coming of Christ now is that the gospel has not truly got into the four corners of the earth. And GCK is carrying this gospel now, even beyond the four corners of the earth, pray that God will move in a mighty way in the land of the Philippines and save souls. In the name of Jesus. Father, we commit, O oh Lord, this program. In, don't let us admit these people, they are back again. Don't let us admit them. Nobody should admit them. Let them just stay there and leave. Let's pray that God will do wonders in the, in the Philippines and save souls. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray, O oh Lord. You said in your word, if I will be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. O oh Lord God, in heaven, commit, Father, this program in the Philippines, O oh Lord, into your hand. Your name is being lifted up, not the name of Pastor Kung, not the name of the Palai Bible Church, but the name of Christ is being lifted up as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness. O oh Lord God, now we pray that your mighty hand will touch these people. Your mighty power will touch these people. You will save souls in the Philippines. You will save souls in Asia. You save so in North America. Uh, this program is being televised all over the world. Father in heaven, we pray, O oh Lord, that you will save souls everywhere in Jesus' name. O oh Lord God, in heaven, we pray that you save people, O oh Lord, deliver, O oh Lord, all the oppressed people that drugs have done, they destroy their lives. Father in heaven, we pray, O oh Lord, that great deliverance will be in this program, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, save your people, Lord. You are not willing that any should perish, but that all will come unto repentance. You have created man in your own image after your likeness. O oh Lord, go and we pray that you will arise, O oh Lord, deliver this man. We pray, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now we are going to, to pray for the servant of God. By June, the pastor will be 83. And look at the strength, look at the, 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 the workload that is on him. Let's pray that God will touch his physical body, that he will not be sick. His body will not be weak, that the end of God will be upon him, and that double portion of the anointing of God will rest upon him, 
that as it's going from place to place, imagine flying. I know that flight will be more than 13 hours to the Philippines. I don't know the actual, but I know it will be more than 13 hours sitting in a flight at this age. Let's pray that God will strengthen our Father in the Lord. Shall we pray? Yes. Father in heaven, commit your servant, O Lord, into your hand, Pastor WF Kumui and Sister Esther Kumui and all the brethren that are moving up and down with him. Mm -hmm. O Lord, we, know, we pray that your hand will be mighty upon this ones. O Lord, in Jesus' name, Father, we pray that you, you, your hand will touch him. You rest upon him. His body will not be sick. His body will not be weak. In the name of Jesus, O Lord God, and then we pray that you my Father, rest upon him mightily, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, the wife of Lord will come into Lord to your hand. Father, we pray that your power will rest upon her. You will continue to make an encouragement to our Father and the Lord, O Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like we are going to pray for that uh, power that God bestowed in the life of Moses, you know, Moses from 40, he left Egypt. Under 40, he came back to Egypt. Under 40, he led the children of Israel in the wilderness. Now, our Father and the Lord, we are going to pray for that anointing in the life of Moses to come upon him. Amen. He just entered the third 40 now. He has seen two 40s already. He's on the third one. We pray. Let's pray for him that this Amen. other 40 years, that his eyes will not go dim, his bones will not go weak, his body will, 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 will not be weak, that the power of God will rest upon him as he's doing the work more and more, that the strength of God will be with him, his voice will not, will, will, will not fail. Let's pray that God will strengthen him and put upon him that double portion, anointing of Moses, that he will do even more than what uh, Father Moses did in this time. Shall we pray? Father, we commit your servant, O Lord, into your hand as he has entered the third 40 in his life. Father, we pray that your power will rest upon him. Your hand will be mighty upon him. O Lord God in heaven, we declare that his bones will not be weak, his flesh will not be weak, his eyes will not go dim. His body will not be weak. O oh Lord, God, now we strengthen him, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, God, now we pray that we continue to honor his voice, O oh Lord. Father, continue to honor his voice, O oh Lord. Father, continue to honor his voice, O oh Lord, as he speaks, O oh Lord. Everyone continue to, to answer, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that your name and your name will not be exalted in his life, O oh Lord, in the name Okay. Spirit of the living God. We pray, O oh Lord, that your mighty hand will rest upon him. Your spirit will abide upon him. Father, in heaven, the wife, even the, the GCK chairman, the GK, the GCK staff that are going from places to places. Father, we pray that your power will continue to rest upon them. Your protection will be upon them. No harm will come before them, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Now we are going to pray for the protection of God upon the servant of God. You know, last year when he said he wanted to go to this same Abba, the high pop said he should not come. That they don't want an attack to happen. They now say it's high pop. Now, finally, he went to Abba. He has six full days in Abba. We thank God that nothing happened. The protection of God was upon him. Let's pray that everywhere he go, as he go to the Philippines now, maybe from there we want to go to any other part of the world. The I'm edges of the earth and the fullness therein. Let's, let's pray that the protection of God continue to be upon the servant of God and his team, that no harm will come to their flesh. No harm will come to them in any form. That God's army will continue to protect and guide and, and preserve him in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? 
Father, we and Father, heaven, we commit your servant to God into your hand as he has moved to the Philippines. Now we pray. We thank you for what you did in Abba. Last year, the IPOP said Abba is not safe. They don't want any attack and uh, the blame will be given to them. Uh, but look at it this year. He went there now. He did since then. Your hand was with him. Your power was with him. Your armies kept him. Father, we pray. Every part of the world that he desired to go, oh Lord God, now we pray that you send the army to go before him and prepare the place and put calm in the place. In the name of Jesus. That is why I will know that he goes to the north with all this Boko Haram attacking people and all gathering. And yet, your servant will gather thousands, hundreds, and, and thousands of people, and yet nothing happens. We know it is your army, your invisible army that is doing the job. Father, we pray that you continue to protect your servant, O oh Lord, and his team, that no harm will come before them, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today is the first working day of the week. Let's pray that God will keep and protect us throughout this week in Jesus' name. And after this, Pastor Matthew can take over, sir. Father in heaven, we commit, O oh Lord, this week, O oh Lord, into your hand. We have come into the week with praises and honoring your name. We pray that throughout this week, your praises will not depart from our mouths. Your honor will not depart from our life. Your hand will not depart from us, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, lead us in all our way. Protect us and provide for us, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Glory, honor, adoration, and thanksgiving be unto your name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you've answered us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's call upon the name of the Lord that God will continue to be God in our family. God will continue to be God Father, over your business. God will Father, walk we to be God to be over God your wife. God over will my life. To be God over your over your over your children. Everybody, over what life of my life. To be to over God. the life of my God. children. God. Over my entire family. Father, God we pray I continue to be God, O oh Lord, your family, in the name of Jesus. Not, they, 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 they oh Lord, will not, God, they will not be over my work. Because Father, of God, pray, because be, you trust continue to be God, O oh Lord. You believe in God. Father, continue to be God, O oh Lord. Father, continue to be God, O oh Lord. Even over my life, O oh Lord, in in no circumstances, my Lord, God, you never let come before your throne of mercy, O Lord, God, you never let come after me, O Father. That God to be God, Lord. Father, continue 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 to be God, Lord. Then when the God be God, he said, they say that man does not Lord God, they even anything they will do something new in my life, O Lord. That man will never change. That man will continue to be God. God will never continue to be God in my life. Father, 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 continue to be God in my life. Oh Lord, God, Lord, Christ, all upon the name of the Lord. Lord. Be God, oh Lord. All upon the name of the Lord. All upon the name of the Lord. All upon the name of the Lord. Over your life, over everything that belongs unto you, all of you, and want you to make a special prayer for yourself today. That if it remains only one man, that we believe in Jesus Christ, it will be you. That God will make me go away from you, oh Lord. That if it is going to be me, that if it is going to be me, oh Lord. That if it is going to be me, oh Lord. That if it is going to be me, oh Lord. That if it is going to be me, oh Lord. Father, the, no matter the, what the, happens, the, 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 this may change. This may change in the church. Air. They may change their tone. God. They may change in environment. Your community may change. Your friend may change. Father, in the Lord may change. Me that man, O Lord. Me that man, O Lord. That all the officers may change. The propagators may change. Propagators may change. The founder of the church may change. All of the name of God, my life. But as concerned as concerned you, Joshua, look at this important word. In my family, O Lord, in the name of Jesus, O Lord, I call my children to your hand. I pray, O Lord, that you help us, O Lord, that we continue to serve you at all times. 
Not until we take it away Lord, from the love of God, the Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, all of God, in the name of the God, that the grace of the Lord, that the grace of the Lord, that the grace of the Lord, that the grace of the will not take you away. Lack of money will not take you away. Ignorance will not take you away. Worthiness will not take you away. Foolishness will not take you away. All of God, in the name of the Lord, that by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will continue to serve God to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. If you look at the light, you look at the left side, and there's no work. You look at the left side, you will there's no work. You will be able to see the strong of that man. I have surrendered. I have surrendered all to Jesus. 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 That all to Jesus. That will be your song. That will be my song. No, in most situations, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, God will continue to be God in our life in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord, we continue to be able to to be dominion over our life in the name of Jesus Christ, and we will serve God to the end. And we will serve God to the end. We will serve God. To the end. So shall it be. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. That's all you mean. You can land up for us. I uh, see online. Father, we thank you very much. We give you all the glory that you deserve. Thank you for the prayer this morning. Thank you for how we were at. Thank you, Lord, for the prayer request. Thank you for the prayer point. Thank, thank you for you. everything, Lord, we have told you in the place of prayer. Lord, oh, yeah. even your servant, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumoi, we trust oh, you, Lord, that there will be testimony in all that we have told you. We have, Amen. All, Amen. we have told you about our pastors, what they are going through. We know yes. that we shall testify. We know that Amen. you hear answered prayer. Holy Father, yes. show to us that even this new way, there will be a compensation. Even Amen. this new the answers to prayer. Even Amen. this new way, we will come here and testify to the glory of God, of the manifold thing God has done in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask, oh God, that you will encourage your servant who have prayed for King me and his sister, and we trust you, Lord Jesus, that all that we have told you about them, you have answered already. Amen. Go up Amen. The front, they will become, Lord, an enigma of excellence. They will become paragon of success. Amen. 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 That you make their life standard for other young people. And Lord, I pray that you have plans for their lives will not be truncated by the enemy of their soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This week, you will keep us. And Lord, I pray that the issue of time will be restored permanently to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Let's share the grace together. It's the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love amen. of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God be with us now and forevermore. Amen. amen. Surely, the Lord and Master shall follow us all the days of our life. That the Lord is at the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank good you. morning, no? Pastor Matthew. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good sir. Morning. All is God bless you, sir. All Amen. our sacrifices in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you all. Yes. Okay. Thank you for yesterday. God bless you, sir. Well, this is what. Well, we're for all this time, sir. Bye, bye, sir. Bye, bye.
Praise the Lord. We welcome you to the Bible study tonight. And I pray we'll have a wonderful time together in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your people. Thank you for fathers, mothers, children, boys and girls. Thank you for everyone, Lord. Thank you for the interest you have given us to study with you, to hear your word, and to hear the declarations you have made concerning the end time events. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you open our eyes of understanding and you give us the heart to take in, the heart to receive, and the heart and the mind to be prepared to do your will, so we'll be ready for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. As you know, we've been studying from Mark chapter 13. And the answer of the Lord Jesus Christ, which eventually has now revealed to us the event, events of the last days, that answer came as a result of the question that the disciples had asked. Actually, the Lord Jesus Christ had been talking to them about his days. He has spoken to them about his resurrection. And he has spoken recently to them about the destruction of the temple. And he said, no stone will be left upon another. They will see everything collapsing. Everything will totally crumble and come down. And then he spoke about his coming again and spoke about the end of the world. I've told you already that that came as a surprise to them. And so now they came to ask the question privately, intimately, when he was alone with his own disciples. Outsiders were not there. Pharisees were not there. Sadducees were not there. These were the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ who wanted to know. And he said, tell us, when shall these things be? And when will be the end of the world and the sign of your coming? And that's what we have been looking at in the various uh, parts of the answer that he gave to them. Today we're looking at Mark chapter 13, verse 14, all through to verse 23. And today the Lord mentioned himself, the great tribulation. And we're looking at Christ's infallible prophecy of the great tribulation. Number one, it's a prophecy. It's something that has not happened. It's something that will happen. And because it will happen, that's why it is prophecy. It is infallible because it is unchangeable. It is, not, it is something that nothing can change. No man and no power, no evil, no Satan. And even God will not change this. It's a time that will come. That's why it's called the infallible prophecy and it is from Christ and he is the personification of the truth. He told the truth, he said the truth and now let us look at uh, this passage where I'm studying from verse 14 to verse 23 at the beginning I'll just select some verses for us to read look at verse 14 now it says in verse 14, but when he shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand, standing where it ought not to stand, let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. The Lord Jesus Christ abroad the prophecy of the past that Daniel spoke about this. He said, Daniel the prophet, he spoke about the abomination of desolation. And he said, when you see the people who live in the world at that time, when they shall see, he says, he that readeth, let him understand. He that readeth, that means it's, it, it's not just the disciples. He that will read about this, he that readeth what we're learning now, let him take note and let him know that that time is very near. I'm reading from verse 19 now. In verse 19, as Jesus con uh, continued, he said, For in those days, he's talking about the days of the affliction, the days of the great tribulation, the days that are still coming. For in those 
those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation which, the, which God created until this time, neither shall be. It talks about the affliction, it talks about the suffering, and it talks about the great tribulation that is to come. And there's something peculiar about that great tribulation. It is something that had never been such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created until this time. And then he said, neither shall be. That means that it will happen, it will be the height of suffering, and the height of pain, and the height of sorrows, and the height of affliction. And that's what we are talking about, Christ's infallible prophecy of the great tribulation. Today we're dividing the message to three parts. Uh, number one is the abomination of desolation after the glorious translation. You understand? There's going to be a, tr a glorious translation. Translation means the Lord is going to catch us away. He's going to take us away. The, the term for that, technical term for that, is the rapture. But the rapture is the glorious translation and the abomination of desolation that will happen, notice this word, after, after, after the glorious translation. Point number two, the affliction beyond description during the great tribulation. After the rapture has taken place, after the glorious translation has taken place, after the saints, after the church has gone, after the bride of Christ has been removed from this world, that's the glorious translation, after the ambassadors of Christ have been taken away from this world, that's the glorious translation, then there will be the great tribulation. That great tribulation will be a time of affliction beyond description, beyond what had ever happened and what will ever happen. Point number two, the affliction beyond description during the great tribulation. Point number three now is the activity of deceivers for the great tyrant. During the great tribulation, a tyrant a king of a wicked personality will arise. It's called the Antichrist. And there will be deceivers, there will be seducers, there will be people that will be prophesying and walking this and walking that by the power of the devil. And that devil, that Satan, that Antichrist is referred to now as the great tyrant. And the activities of those uh, people that will be working for him is point number three, the activity of deceivers for the great tyrant. Let's come back to number one. In point number one, this is the abomination of desolation after the glorious translation. The abomination of desolation after the glorious translation. Now, we need to think very well in a logical way, systematic way, scriptural way. And we're talking, number one, about the ascension. Ascension is when something goes up, when someone goes up. Like when Jesus Christ was talking to his disciples, and then he was lifted up, and he went up. We call that the ascension of Christ. That ascension is going to happen to the old church, to the church of the saints of God. That's the rapture, that's the rapture of the catching away, the taking up of the children of God, of the saints of God, the ascension that will happen before the devastation. Number two, then we'll see in this section the abomination of desolation. Then we'll see number three, the admonition for escaping damnation. Why are we studying? Why are we here? Why are you reading your Bible? Why are you studying your Bible? Why do we want to know about the things that Christ has said so that we'll escape? And so that will not be part of the people that will suffer in the great tribulation, when that great tribulation will take place. That's why we need to, as we talk about the rapture, you want to take part in the rapture. As we talk about the abomination, you just want to be enlightened so that when that desolation, damnation will come upon this world, you will 
escape. Thank God you are going to escape. Saved, you will escape. Sanctified, you will escape. And standing steadfast in the will of God, in the mind of God, you will escape in Jesus' name. The admonition for escaping damnation. And let's run through very quickly. Number one, the ascension before the devastation. As you look at Luke chapter 21, here is what Jesus Christ told his own disciples. And here is what Jesus Christ is telling us. In Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 34, he said, Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with self-eating. And look at what the Lord is saying. He said, As you hear about the events that will come, about the things that will happen at the end of this world, don't just shrug your shoulders. And just say, okay, whatever will happen, will happen. If uh, trouble is coming, tribulation is coming, if suffering is coming, affliction is coming, then what will happen, will happen. He says, no, don't have that nonchalant attitude. You must take it yourself, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that they come upon you unawares. There will be people who just carry on life. Uh, you know, they don't understand that rapture is going to happen. They are not waiting for anything. They are not careful about anything. They are not praying specifically. And they are not preparing themselves specifically. And they are not standing firm in the conviction that they are waiting for the coming of the Lord. And the Lord is saying, don't do that. Don't be nonchalant and don't be careless. Take heed unto yourself. Look at verse 35 of that uh, Luke chapter 21 it says for as is near shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth this is not a localized thing that will happen the desolation that will come the devastation that will come the destruction that will come is not a localized thing it will come like a snare suddenly upon all them that dwell on the face of the earth but the Lord has told us in verse 36, in verse 36 it says, What she therefore? Because many people will be unprepared. Because many people will not be ready. It says, you, my child, you, my servant. It says, what she therefore and pray always that she may be, that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and then to stand before the Son of Man. The rapture is going to take place before the devastation, before the abomination, before the rule of the Antichrist. This is very interesting. Look at Luke chapter 17, verse 29. In Luke chapter 17, verse 29, the Lord says, like it happened at the time of Lord, it says that same day that Lord went out of Sodom, that same day that Lord went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Please understand, Lord went out of Sodom before the fire of God's wrath and God's judgment came upon Sodom. The church will leave this place. The church will leave the earth, will be translated, will be raptured, will be cut off, will be taken away before the Antichrist will come to rule over the world here. The Lord will not allow the Antichrist to rule over his bride. You understand? The Lord will not allow that devastation to come while his ambassadors are still here, while the church is still here. And it says, the same day that Lord went out of Sodom, and it's after that it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them. Look at verse 30 and look at what the Lord is saying. It says, even thus, even in the same way shall it be in the day that the Son of Man is revealed. It's very clear then that the rapture will take place before the devastation. 
if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 51, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. It says, We shall not all die, we shall not all be in the grave, we shall not all be resting in the grave, but we shall all be changed. In verse 52, it, it says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, that for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised in corruption. That's the time of the rapture. There will be a resurrection. And then the rapture now. And we shall be changed. We've read this before. Just to refresh your memory in First Thessalonians chapter 4. Reading from verse 14. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Reading from verse 14. It says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, we believe that, don't you? That's how you were saved. You believe that Jesus Christ died for you and that he rose again for your salvation, for your justification. And because we believe that, that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He is coming. And he says, the Lord Almighty God will bring with him the people that sleep in the dust. Look at verse 15. It says, verse 15, for we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive, believers, saints, children of God, saved and sanctified, holy and ready for the coming of the Lord. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive, alive in Christ, alive in righteousness, alive as new creatures in Christ, and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them, shall not precede them, shall not hinder them, which are asleep. And then in verse 16, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, this prophetic, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then in verse 17, glorious translation, it says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be cut off together with them in the clouds, will be cut off will be translated, we will ascend, we will go up um, to meet the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Look at verse 18 there. In verse 18 it says, Therefore comfort one another. If we're going to go through the great tribulation, there's no comfort in that. If the abomination of desolation is going to meet us here, there's no, there's no uh, comfort in that. If we're going to go through the same affliction that the people of the world, that the unbelievers, that those who are serving Satan, if they, we're going to go through the same thing with them, there's no comfort in that. But because we're waiting for the coming of the Lord, we're waiting for the rapture. And when the rapture takes place and we're gone. That's only when the devastation, the destruction, the abomination can come upon this world. That's why we have the comfort. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Let's come back to Mark now, chapter 13, verse 14. In Mark chapter 13, verse 14, the Lord Jesus Christ is talking about the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel. And he's saying, after we have gone, there will be the abomination Abomination of desolation. You know desolation? That's devastation. You know desolation? That's destruction. You know desolation? That's like taking something good, something beautiful, tearing to pieces, making everything to crumble, destroying everything you know, until there is nothing good that people of the world will be living for. It says in Mark chapter 13, verse 14, it says, But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, the very language of Jesus Christ, the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet. The prophet, who is the prophet? A prophet is someone that God.
God reveals what is going to happen to you, and he declares that, and because it is a word coming from God, we cannot miss it. It will not be missed. It will happen. And he says it's spoken of by Daniel the prophet, and it will stand where it ought not. The abomination will stand where it ought not. What does that mean? You see, when you collect something dirty, and you take it to the dustbin, that's uh, taking something that is dirty to a place dedicated for dirty things. But when you take something uh, that is dirty, something defiled, uh, the, the defilement that came out of other uh, animal or out, 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 uh, uh, came out of man, and then you take that to be in the palace, in the throne of the king of the city. That's abomination. And it is standing and it is being placed where it should not be. And what uh, Daniel was speaking about is that abomination of desolation. That, should not, that is standing where it ought not. That means devastation. That means abominable things. That means what God is. When that stands in the temple of God, where it should not be. When that stands in the throne of the king, where it should not be. It says, then take it and understand what you are reading. Understand that is what Daniel spoke about very quickly. Let's look at Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. And you'll see what uh, Daniel mentioned, and you'll see what Jesus Christ is referring to in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Please open your Bible and underline so that when you read later and when you want to teach other people to you, you will know where the passage is in your Bible. It says, and it shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. That one week just means in the original 1-7. That is a unit of seven. What does that mean? Actually, seven years. It says, and in the midst of the week, in the midst of the seven, in the middle of those seven years, it shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. You understand that? It will say, there's no other God you are worshipping. There's no other God you are sacrificing to. There's no other God you are praying to. Therefore, stop all that. It will stop the sacrifices of the Jews. It will stop the the offering of the Jews for the overspreading. Listen to this now of the abominations. It will spread dirty things, it will spread evil things, unacceptable things in the on the altar of God. And it says it shall make it desolate. You see that abominations that will make desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. If you look at uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we're reading from verse 3. I've already explained to you that that abomination of desolation is when something dirty, something unacceptable, a, a wicked personality, an evil personality comes to see it at the very altar of the Lord. And he wants to displace God. That's the abomination of desolation in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. That day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. You understand? When people are falling away from the truth, and they don't care for the truth, there may be church, but there's no truth. There may be assembly, but there's no truth. And people are used to just telling stories. And they're not used to delving into the Bible, going into the Word of God. And they're used to just hearing whatever the man, the preacher, the priest wants to say. And it's a falling away from the truth. And the people have not heard the truth for so many years. Even when you tell them error, even when you expose them to error, there's, there's nothing they can do because they do not know the difference. That time, you know, is already here in the world. That day shall not come except until there come a falling away for us and that man of sin. 
that man of sin. That's talking about the Antichrist. That's talking about the tyrant. That's talking about Satan incarnate. That's talking about the one that will totally be controlled by Satan. And it's a man of sin, a man of Satan, a man of evil. It says, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. What will he do? What will he do? This is the abomination. Look at verse 4. Who will possess and exalt himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's the abomination. When you take that dirty, defiled personality, and then he sits at the very seat of God, and then he calls the people, everyone, to worship him. And if they will not worship him, he will compel them. That's the abomination of desolation. Look at Revelation chapter 13. We're reading from verse 6. Revelation chapter 13 and we're reading from verse 6 it says and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God you see that there's somebody who comes to uh, the church of the living God he comes to the seat of the living God he comes to the throne of the living God he comes to the altar of the living God and he opens his mouth against the God of heaven to blaspheme his name and to blaspheme his tabernacle, and to blaspheme them that dwell in heaven. That's the abomination of desolation. My prayer for you is that you will not be in the world at such a time in Jesus' name. Let me hear your amen. You'll not be here at that time in Jesus' name. If you're not going to be here at that time, what's the admonition the Lord is giving us? And what's the Lord telling us how to escape that kind of abomination, that desolation, that destruction, that deception, and that damnation? Uh, we look at Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 15, the admonition for escaping damnation. The admonition for escaping damnation. It tells us in chapter 13 of Mark, verse 15, and let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of the house. It's talking actually to the people that will be here at such a time. I pray you'll not be here. But you know, as we apply that to ourselves, it's saying that as God has brought you to the mountain top of light, to the mountain top of the gospel, to the mountain top of redemption, to the mountain top of righteousness, to the mountain top of salvation, sanctification, and the power and the strength of the Lord as we see the world crumbling, as we see the world going down the drain, as we see all righteous principles being overturned. You are at the top. Don't calm down. Don't backslide. Don't look down. And don't look behind you. Look at verse 16. It says in verse 16, And let him that is in the field not turn back again to take up his garment. He's saying to the people that will live at that time, that if they hear that something has happened in the city, the abomination of desolation in Jerusalem, and the Antichrist is occupying the seat where God ought to occupy, and is blaspheming the name of God in the the field. Let them not come back to the place where they were before because affliction was, will start in a devastating, destructive manner. What's that saying to you and to me? Well, the field of evangelism, well, the field of working for God, and we hear that this is happening, this is happening, that's not the time to come back and say, you know, nightclub and drinking and merriment and picnic, because now we know the time is near, and we're not going to allow anything to disengage us and to make us leave the work he has given us today. In verse 17, it says, in verse 17, but woe to them 
that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Why is it a crime to have a child, a crime to be pregnant? Not, not at all. He's talking about such a time when the Antichrist will uh, take over and then when food will be measured, when you will not be able to take this and buy this except to take the mark of the Antichrist. And even if you could endure and hunger by yourself, if you could endure the famine by yourself, and you say, I will take my stand, what about the baby that is crying all the time? I need something to eat. And if that, if that child is going to get what to eat, then you have to take the mark of the beast. And once you take that mark, it's all over. That means that the destruction will come. That's why it's saying, be ready now, so you will not be in the world at such a time. My brother, my sister, if there's anything that should occupy our attention, it is being ready.